Jerky? Here, you want this jerky? Brian. Okay, it's 7 o'clock. Let's get started. This is the regular council meeting for Monday, October 18th, 2021, for the city of TK, South Carolina. Would you all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. Looks like we have a standing room only today. I wish we'd had this on every meeting. Wonder what something special must be going on. Let's find out with the agenda. All right, let's go to item number one, which is a special presentation, uh, public safety recognition by Chief Hasty and Chief Parker. Gentlemen. Good evening. How's everybody? Good. So uh, we've got a recognition tonight uh, for something very special. Uh, Mr. Smith is with us tonight uh, because of the actions of a neighbor. And uh, I'll read this to you, and then I'll, I'll uh, read this certificate as well. On April 11th, Mr. Smith was working in the yard and had a cardiac event. He fell to the ground, hitting his head during the fall. The 911 call was dispatched as a fall with injury. But fortunately for Mr. Smith, Mandy Secorsi happened by. Uh, she stopped to lend a hand. Uh, she was a neighbor. She found Mr. Smith unresponsive and pulseless. She immediately started CPR. The TK Fire Department and 4 Mill EMS shortly arrived after that to give care to Mr. Smith. Due to the care he received in early CPR from Ms. Corsi, Mr. Smith had a return of pulses while on scene. He was taken to the hospital for advanced intervention and monitoring. We rarely hear results from calls, either positive or negative. After a conversation with Adam, Mandy's husband, several weeks ago, I spoke to the firefighters and to Mr. Smith, looking for additional information on the call. Mr. Smith credits Mandy for saving his life. Tonight, we want to recognize Mandy for putting herself or putting others in front of herself and stopping helping a neighbor. So we have a certificate tonight, Mandy. It says, in recognition of a selfless act to save a neighbor during a time of crisis in our city on Waterloo Drive in Cameron Creek on April 11. Mandy, thank you. I just want to take a minute to certainly thank Mandy and uh, thank you seems so little to do, but also I appreciate the uh, help from all the EMS staff and everything, everyone who was involved. I really appreciate it. And uh, every day is a gift, you know, thanks. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So uh, very rare that we get to talk about a life-saving event twice in one night. Uh, but 
very excited to be able to talk about Haley Williamson tonight. Uh, about a week and a half ago, we were called. Uh, Sergeant Ectonal responded to the Circle K off of Dam Road in regards to a subject that was unresponsive. And uh, the reason why we ended up getting there to the call for service was because Haley had seen somebody who appeared to be like they were possibly overdosed on drugs or something was going wrong. There was some type of medical event going on. So she went inside. She told the clerk. The clerk called us. Sergeant Ectonal was able to respond. Uh, at that time, he was able to administer one dose of Narcan. The person did not come back from the first dose of Narcan. We thought we were losing the person. Several minutes later, we added another dose, and the subject came back after three or four minutes. So it's kind of an a, a awesome thing that Haley did and Sergeant Ectonal, and this is the third thing third life-saving event from narcan that we've had in the last three weeks so that's just to show the increase in fentanyl and and the se severeness of it but tonight we want to recognize haley williamson for a life-saving award this acknowledges an extraordinary citizen it's in grateful appreciation for your caring and willingness to speak up a life that was saved because of you congratulations good job Great job, Haley. Great job, Sergeant. Good job, Josh. Awesome. All right, we're going to change our name to TKK, the City of Heroes. <laughs> Pretty good, two in one night. All right, let's go down to item number two, public comments. I have two people signed up for public comments. Let's start with Alice Stoblinski. Come to the podium, state your name, address, blood type, how many children you have, when's the last name? Bank account number. Uh, Alice Stoblinski, 11163 Water Trace. Um, I want to state for the record that no candidate can you guys hear me? I want to say for the record that no candidate um, for the election or existing council members, um, including the mayor himself, were aware that I would be speaking on this topic here tonight. Um, I've heard, heard a lot of chatter through the years, living here 15 years, on whether or not these elections should be partisan, especially this year. Uh, so I decided to follow the money that has been sent on these type of campaigns uh, and, and take a look at it. For my research, I use only current council members election spending. This ensures a fact-based review of the current election that is, uh, because the current election that's going on has not concluded. All the information that I'm about to share is public information available to everyone online. All of us can get it. For their elections, Alicia Dash spent $1,945. Gus Machunas, $850. Ryan Richard, zero. Twice, actually. Congratulations. David O'Neill spent $775. And Heather Oberman spent $10,080. All of these individuals use mainly local firms to produce signs and other materials. And from what I was able to find out, no one utilized a partisan firm with the exception of one individual, Ms. Oberman. Ms. Oberman spent $10,000 on a campaign, which is five times as much as the next largest amount spent by Mrs. Dash, and more than 10 times the next highest spender on council. Of the over $10,000 used to fund her campaign, Ms. Overman raised $6,700. From what I was able to discern, roughly 30 to 35% of that was raised outside of TKK. This led me to a website called Act Blue, where Ms. Overman is registered as a candidate. Based on the, their website, Act Blue is an online fundraising platform powering candidates, uh, Democratic candidates, committee parties, organizations, and other C4s around the country. 
76.8% of the money spent by Ms. Overman overall went to, uh, was spent with a direct mail campaign firm located in Washington, D.C. This firm was called Residence Campaign. If you look up this firm, you will see a statement of their partisan views. It states that they are a full-service direct mail and digital communications firm with a mission to advance progressive candidates and policies. If TEK elections are truly nonpartisan, then we should not allow candidates to leverage partisan funds without disclosing their party affiliation on the ballot. After doing the research, I strongly believe that we as a community should be provided the truth and know when a candidate is running on a partisan campaign using partisan funds, groups, and platforms. Ms. Oberman was an anomaly in TEK. Her campaign spent more than any other I could find registered in the history of TEK. That said, our city has forever been changed, and now we must change with it. While we may, be far, we may be too far down the path for this election year, I respectfully ask council, all of you, to adjust our future elections to partisan elections. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thanks. Next, Liz Duda. Liz, you have three minutes to talk about stormwater. And your time will start after you give me your name and address. Thank you, Liz Duda, 1081 Palmyra Drive, TKK. As we know, stormwater is a significant issue in TKK across Lake Wiley and across the Catawba River. We've seen its influence on sediment um, falling into the lake. So uh, Council Member Machunas has pointed out that two docks have been rendered useless in TKK or, or uh, unable to dock a boat there, given that sediment has filled in in those dock areas. We've also seen the effect on the algal blooms that we're seeing right now in Lake Wiley in certain coves. So we do know that stormwater is an issue. So uh, today I had the opportunity to meet with the Catawba River Keeper and Shane Paris city staff, and I want to say thank you very much for the work that you have put into this. I, want, I appreciate Ms., uh, Council Member Machunas for your pointing out the issues. Um, I'm very grateful to the Planning Commission, which worked very hard to bring forth recommendations to City Council. Um, what the Catawba River Keeper found today, he did not find that there were significant improvements that could be made to the ordinance, so I think he found minor minor changes that, that, that he and, and Mr. Paris talked about. Um, so I, I think they will be discussing those. I think what we need to do, what, what I'm, my understanding is that we need to have a voice at a regional level, so the major impact is coming from upstream, so it, to the effect, to the extent that TKK can have a voice in, in upstream matters, try to influence what we can um, no, to the neighbors to the north, that they have stronger stormwater resolutions, either at a county level or at a statewide level. So I suggest looking to the Catawba Riverkeeper Foundation, who will probably lead the efforts, let us know what they're doing, and we can see how we can move forward there. But um, so again, stormwater is a significant issue affecting us, and we do need to speak up, but it looks like we're doing what we can at the local level, although I know a little more work will be done. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Liz. Thank you. All right, let's move on to, is there, are there any more public comments before? Go ahead, state your name and your address. You have three minutes. Uh, Barb Wilson, 1031 uh, Woodlake Lane. Uh, just coming back this month to check on progress on the, uh, you guys were going to look into the state to see what could be done about the deer out being out of control. And by the way, I have a picture taken tonight on my way out the door of 13 of them in my front yard, and I passed at least five more on the way up here. That's just tonight. Council, I can cover that now. Uh, I do have it in my city manager's report. It's up to you. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, we do have DNR coming in to work with staff. Uh, it is scheduled to happen uh, sometime in November uh, before Thanksgiving, uh, where they will be spotlighting and using their their formula, their method of determining the deer population, at which point we will come back to council, hopefully at your December meeting, to, uh, to discuss their findings and to discuss whether you want to begin the process of moving forward with the urban deer management plan. The urban deer management plan uh, allows us to do only one way of removal, and that is sharpshooters hired by the city to shoot and kill and then remove the deer. We cannot use uh, tranquilizers and relocate them. We cannot use fertility treatments to stop them from breeding. Um, there is only one method that SEDNR will allow us to use, and that is sharpshooters. So we can have those conversations. Um, you know, when we did this several years ago, uh, the numbers determined that we had more of a socialization issue, to use DNR's words, not mine, uh, than we did an overpopulation issue. Don't know that they'll find the same uh, this go-round. Uh, there does 
at least in my neighborhood, seem to be a lot more. Uh, we are seeing a lot more buck uh, than what we've seen in the past, but they are coming in. They're scheduled to come in next month uh, uh, and work through, well, next month, within the next few weeks uh, as we get into November uh, to begin that process. So a follow-up question. Um, for the removal, is this just a thinning of the herd, or is it removal completely so we won't have to go through this again in five years? Oh, I don't think it'll be, I don't think you'll get all 100% of the deer removed. Uh, we have to designate the areas uh, where they can do it, the times of day, times of night that they can do it, that kind of thing. Yeah, kind of like the coyote trapping that, that we were doing. Um, you're not going to catch them all, but um, with the coyotes, we, we thin the herd. Um, I will say that the deer complaints have increased since we start eliminating the coyotes. So yeah. there's, there's not a good answer to, to the deer population. When we discussed this last go round, even the people that hated the deer did not like the idea of sharpshooters being in the city, uh, firing rifles with silencers uh, on them. The, the, so when was, I was here last month, the other question that I had was, mm -hmm. can we do anything at the state level to adjust their um, parameters that they've put around our ability to control the deer? I'd, I would have that conversation possibly with Senator Johnson and Senator Clymer, uh, who are our representatives. Um, but by the time you get something like that passed through the General Assembly, um, I mean, it could, it's something that could take years. So um, I can comment but, on this just a, sure. a moment. Um, so I attended a Municipal Association of South Carolina legislative update, which was one of the first ones that they've ever had. So um, for our remaining council members and those coming, I highly um, encourage you to attend those. But I did propose um, this question out to the audience, just asking them if any communities have been having this experience and what they've gone through. Um, what some of the um, the folks actually recommended is that we do engage with our state legislators to get them to help uh, support our efforts because we are a unique community, we are highly densely populated, and you can't always address the issue of overpopulation of deer the same way in our community as you would a very rural community. Right. Um, I have also shared this information with other members of council um, who will um, certainly or likely be championing, you know, those efforts in the future as well. So I think it's very much on our radar. We're, we're looking into, you know, where we can be, uh, where we can gain support and uh, figure out how to administratively work through some of the um, just restrictions that there could be with, with DNR and how we could potentially address that. So. Yes, so my closing comment is I will support anyone in any way um, to, to help get this moving because the sooner we get it started, the sooner we can get it concluded and, and passed and putting it off is just putting off the problem for another day. Thank you. And what I would say is I would suggest if once we find out the results, bring it to city council and then have a 30-day comment period so everybody, all the public will know about this. You know, make sure they don't, not just show up in December for a vote or if that is, you know, make sure we come up in December. Make sure if it's in public comments, everybody comes up and is aware of it, and maybe have the vote in January. That would be my recommendation. sign up sheet to pull the trigger, sign me up. Gotcha. What do you want to talk about? <laughs> I did notice that the mayor put it off until after he'll be out of office. How convenient. <laughs> So what I should have added on when you get to agenda topic six related to stormwater and um, improve and enhancing stormwater to the extent that we can, could you please make sure that you address the business percentage decline from 25, recommended reduction from 25 to 20 percent in that Thank later you. discussion? Thank you. Anybody else? <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you. Jackie Trevieso, 29031 Windjammer Drive. And I had no intentions of speaking tonight, but now that I have the microphone, I'm, I am against the issue of killing the deer for many reasons. I would like to understand the chief complaint or the top two complaints um, so that we can form maybe When we have more dialogue. knowledge in December, I think that's when it would probably be more likely that you should come back and talk. We're, I will. We're really in the... It's one of the unique things about this city and one of the draws, and it would be an absolute shame if... That's why we're going to give we the public plenty of notice. In the past, I would, if I just had to guess, an unscientific, I think 85% of the people are for the deer, 15 are against, but that's a very unscientific in my six years of being here. Um, I hope so, that's true. I mean, it was probably pretty close to that with the coyotes, too, I think, for a while, maybe. But anyway, well, right. you could take that up in December. I absolutely will. Thank, Thank you. you. Anybody else?
no other comments. Let's move on to item number three, which is approval of minutes. Council, you've seen the minutes. Are there any additions, subtractions, or changes? Seeing none, hearing none, the minutes stand as published. Item number four is committee appointments. Uh, Charlie Funderburk is going to tell us the results of the Board of Zoning Appeals. Yes, sir. <coughs> Excuse me. Mr. Mayor, members of council, um, your top nominee for the uh, open position on Board of Zoning Appeals is Dirk Tannis, Jr. Um, if council is so inclined, we would need a motion and a vote um, to appoint Mr. Tannis to the uh, Board of Zoning Appeals. So it wasn't the person that said all the planners of the city are idiots? Unfortunately, it was one? not. That's what I voted for. That's weird. Mr. Mayor, members of council, motion to approve Dirk Tannis to Boza. Second. Second. I have a I have a motion and a second. Are there any questions? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? It's unanimous. Let's go to item five, committee reports. Start with Economic Development Commission, Mr. Gus. So <clears throat> the meeting was on uh, the 27th. Uh, there was a quorum. Um, the property along Hubert Graham Way, which is not in TKK now, uh, but is adjacent and able to be annexed, was discussed. Um, to try and attract some businesses for more mixed use. Um, discussion was had as to whether to look at someone other than retail strategies, um, who we have hired because they seem to be focused more on national chains, which are more, um, really don't want to be anywhere except on 160 just due to the amount of traffic and trip counts. Uh, no solution there, that was just a discussion. Um, another idea that came up was to uh, send a questionnaire to local businesses. Um, the positives and the negatives um, about doing business here. Um, are they growing and what can the EDC and TKK do to help? Um, another idea that was brought forth was to spotlight <clears throat> local businesses, a different one each week in Rewind and possibly on the TKK homepage. Um, spoke about maybe doing an, an interview with the same you know, preset questions uh, that each business owner could, could answer and you know, compare how they feel about it. Um, just five or six questions. <clears throat> Art funds were discussed. <clears throat> Excuse me. The uh, Donny Shell tournament, um, which you know was had this year, uh, hoping by next year that uh, it can be bigger and better. Um, how do we market it as a uh, community event? Um, one of the members of the commission spoke about um, turning it truly into a community event uh, by reaching out to those that live along the golf course, uh, have them set up tables in their backyard, invite friends, um, you know, so when the golfers come through, they'll be seeing um, the celebrities and the, the golfers out there, maybe interact with them a little bit just to turn it into more of a community event, make it happier. Um, an Easter scavenger hunt for eggs involving local businesses, and uh, also a discussion of fees, especially commercial upfit fees as compared to neighboring communities. And there was a limited discussion of a uh, Christmas tree uh, contest that was going to be done um, up here. And hopefully that gets put together and uh, vetted by the city and finalized at some point. Um, and that was it. All right. Any questions of Gus? All right. Let's go to Planning Commission Alicia. Uh, good evening. So uh, Planning Commission did cancel their meeting this past month, uh, or this month. So the next meeting will be the 1st of November on Monday at 6.30. And work continues, just for Council's um, information, work does continue in researching and evaluating um, a potential proposal on accessory dwellings and uh, public engagement opportunities around uh, redevelopment, rezoning, et cetera. So if you have any questions about any of the details of what they're looking at, feel free to reach out. Any questions? Seeing none, let's go to uh, item 5C, which is the TEK Forever Foundation. Heather. All right. TEK Forever met on the 4th of October. Um, they did decide on a new Taste of York County event date, which will be March 11th, 2022. Hopefully, we'll finally be able to have that. It's now been canceled three times. Um, so they are still pushing the bricks and the benches. They were at National Night Out, um, celebrity bartending this past uh, Friday at Model A. Um, Gus Alicia and I were up there along with Charlie, so that was great. They had a great turnout, um, busy Friday night. Um, they'll be at Fall Festival on October 30th, and then they'll do one final push kind of going into the Christmas season, 
and that'll be it. So if you haven't done it, if you haven't purchased your brick or your bench or both, please get on it right away. That's it. Thank you. Are there any questions for Heather? All right, let's move on to item six, unfinished business, the discussion of potential changes to land development code related to the planning commission's recommendation regarding stream buffers and required open space. Uh, this potential amendments to stormwater regulations and subdivisions of land development code were presented to council in September. As a result, the discussion of the discussion at that meeting, staff is proposing amendments to the subdivision and land development code. Sections 1202.2 to include riparian. That's a new name. Riparian buffer requirements and to amend section 1306 regarding open space requirements. Hooked on phonics. Work for me. Hooked on phonics. <laughs> Works for me too. So, Mayor, if it's if it's okay with you and Council, I can run through some of these. Please do. Um, we do have uh, have advertised the public hearing for your next uh, regular scheduled meeting in November. Um, at which point, you'll also get a recommendation from the Planning Commission um, at that point in time. So, your riparian buffers, um, that's your basically your stream creek buffers, um, that type thing. All this information is in your packet, but um, as has been discussed previously. We currently have a 50 foot buffer. Um, the first 30 feet coming out from the stream um, is protected um, with uh, some disturbance being allowed in, uh, within the next 20 feet of that, um, of that uh, 50 foot buffer. With this change in your first paragraph, it's really talk uh, basically what staff is recommending. Uh, considering this isn't gonna come into play too many places um, left that either can be developed or is already scheduled to be developed. Uh, limiting um, that, that disturbance within the 20 feet even more so um, to um, trails or um, habitat viewing areas. Um, right now they could currently get parking or road within there, that kind of thing. This would, this would move all of that outside of the 50 feet. Um, Ms. Dash and I had a conversation this afternoon. I think there's some cleanup language that uh, we need to work through before that public hearing. Um, incorporating that sentence that starts, however, such public easement shall not be less than 20 foot in width. Along with the changes, we just need to go through there and clarify that so that it's uh, very understandable regardless of whomever may be reading it. Um, but that part addresses the buffer. Um, we added in uh, under 1306.2 uh, um, uh, an additional bullet you see there dedicated a portion of such land uh, for the protection of an essential habitat needed for uh, continued existence of native plants and wildlife. Um, and that was just speaking to the Planning Commission's recommendation of um, conservatory type land um, and adding that in there. Um, really, and then you go down to, um, to the next page where we talk about single family dwelling uh, detached, single family attached and multifamily. And uh, for those that aren't aware, single family attached would be townhomes and then your business commercial area. On the single family uh, detached, the recommendation was to go from 25 to 30% of the gross acreage uh, at a minimum, uh, being undisturbed open space um, uh, by at least a third, and then at least a third um, be suitable for recreation, public use uh, purposes, um, and with the balance um, being uh, land use buffers. So at least two thirds of it would uh, be for public use, natural undisturbed open space or recreational area within a uh, single family uh, detached uh, community. Um, the multifamily and single family attached going from 30% up to 40%. Again, with the same balances as what, what I just described in the uh, single family detached. And then on the business uh, section, um, actually reducing that from 25 to 20%. Um, the thought process there was along the lines of what the EDC is working on um, and not further limiting our commercial area, but basically bringing that down by 5%. Again, that was really more leaning towards that economic development side. Um, you know, again, this is on your agenda tonight for y'all's discussion. Y'all can give us guidance on based on these changes, what other, you know, how would you would like to see these changes prior to the public hearing uh, so we can go ahead and get working on those. Um, so that as it, as it comes to the public hearing, it's, it's the way you want to see it. So well, I mean, I, I, <clears throat> I've got a question on reducing the, the, the business from 25 to 20. I mean, do we really think that's going to make a difference as to whether somebody decides to open a business in TKK or not, that 5%? I, 
On a, on a, on a <clears throat> commercial business uh, development, um, yeah, I think it would depend on, I mean, if you're talking about Walmart, that's 28 acres, you know, 5% could be a lot. Um, yeah, on something like um, uh, Stonecrest Ventures 3, where you've got Model A, X-Golf, Toppers, Pizza, 5% is next to nothing. You know, so I think it, it ultimately is going to depend on the size of that business development. So this would apply to each house, but the but the development of no, it would it would apply to the gross acreage. The gross so not not on a of per a development, house, but if that development comes in and it's two hundred acres, then thirty per, and it's all which obviously this council has said no single, not just residential development. You want the mixed use, so at that point you'd be looking at your gross acreage for business, your gross acreage on the residential, and whatever those acreages add up to. <laughs> then that would be the total amount of that open space that they would have to they would have to set aside within the development. Thinking about the two areas that we have left to develop for commercial and resident or for commercial um, and retail, you know we have the game on game off area, mm -hmm. um, which is six mm, about sixty, 60 acres, acres mm -hmm. yeah, and then fifteen in Windhaven. So Windhaven probably not huge, um, but game off that's. Especially a considering amount. it's got a it's got a stream running through it where you've already got the right. buffers that are going to. So would that be considered that. the natural no, area? They could, they could put that. Yes, the, part of that okay. buffer can be part of the natural area. Yes, ma'am. Okay. But I mean, Back. even even a, a development the size of Game Off or Graceland, whatever we're yeah. going to call it now, mm -hmm. um, you have that stream running through. So I mean, that's going to count, and all the property around it's going to count towards it. And I mean, you don't have sixty acres of of business. I mean. You, Correct. you have a very small portion of that, so I don't, I don't know. I don't see that it makes that big a difference. I don't think, even even if some of this property near here we annex it uh, for mixed use, I, I just don't see where that extra five percent is going to make that big of a difference because the commercial portion no. of it's only going to be so large. We're not going to have mm -hmm. another Walmart. Target's not moving in. Correct. Um, not yet. I just, I, it I, could count I, for redevelopment, though. Correct. This could, yeah, this would count I mean, for redevelopment someone, at some point. If someone point. were to come in to replat, say around the marina or something like that, mm -hmm. not saying that that's even on the radar. <laughs> Don't want anybody to freak out about that. But um, yeah, these these percentages. If somebody were to come in for a redevelopment, um, these percentages still apply as part of your land development code. So, I mean, if if the 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 feeling on council is to keep it at twenty five percent then we'll make that change prior to the public hearing for your consideration. I mean, that's why we wanted, again, to have it in front of you guys tonight, get some, get some further clarification, direction, um, before um, you know, it's being discussed at the public hearing. So my, my thoughts are, are kind of twofold on this one, <clears throat> and, and really specific to the business, um, the 20 to 25%. Uh, one is just, and I mentioned this to Charlie earlier, but just making sure that there's no quote unquote loopholes where uh, the developer could come in and say, because of that, like thinking about the game off development, oh, they're gonna count this um, commercial area plus that stream buffer as the, the you know, the 20% um, that, 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 whole, that whole area there is gonna be, that middle part is gonna be claimed as to, to fall within the 20% category. So that way they have to do a less, a lesser percentage versus on the other side of that, which could also be claimed on the multifamily side, then they'd have to do 40%. So just making sure that, you know, if there's another category that needs to be added or if there's um, a way to specify or um, differentiate, like how, do, how those areas that might be um, natural or undisturbed that are identified between those different sections of multifamily, single family and business are really fairly divided mm -hmm. up and not, you know, skewed one way or the other. Well, right. Yes. So, um, I mean, and, and again, as, as Ms. Tash and I talked, because of the way it's spelled out, you know, it's on the gross acreage of, of, the, um, of your business. So they're going to have a business area, um, same as your gross acreage on your multifamily or your single family. Um, but I'll talk to Susan when she's back. Uh, unfortunately, she was out um, um, sick today. But... I mean, I think, yeah, potentially we could look at maybe a fourth category of the mixed use since that seems to be what we're, uh, people are targeting more. That seems to be a little bit more palatable to council um, to where there is a, a, a mixed use category where, say, the game off Graceland, whatever we're going to call it, 
comes in, since it is a true mixed use um, you know, development, then it's, it's off of that total acreage and maybe that percentage lands at a 30% because you've got a residential and a business component or something like that. But we can, we can definitely talk about that and, and just make sure we're looking at that wording to button up any loopholes that may exist. Yeah. Sure. And then secondly, um, the, the strike through on the one third shall be suitable for recreation or public use purposes at a minimum. Mm -hmm. And so um, Charlie and I were talking about this too and you know, with, the, with the mixed use uh, zoning um, applying, I think that we try to address some of this there, but um, with this, with the application of a PDD, we don't necessarily have all of those, um, you know, public uh, recreational use requirements in here. So one thing we were talking about is just when we're thinking about the types of businesses and the things that we've heard through surveys, comp plan, process, all that, um, you know, having that public space for additional things to happen around these businesses which could attract more business to them, right, if, it's, if we're creating the right environments, um, such as, you know, like a small farmer's market or, or area for gathering for a band, things like that. So um, I actually liked keeping that, that in there, whether or not it, it says both recreation or public use or if we scratch recreation and it just says public use purposes. Mm -hmm. But um, I certainly want, I, I, I'm leaning towards leaving that part in there so that Okay. Even though it's even though we do cover it in the mixed use zoning, mm -hmm. just having it in there makes it apply to the PDD as well. Got it. And I'd, I'd be. I know common sense minutes. is an uncommon virtue at this point, but my two cents is less regulation and more common sense. It's a guide, yep. and ultimately, any PDD or any suggestion that comes in, council determines. Mm -hmm. So we don't need thirty-seven pages on something that was once eight. We just need a little common sense. Got it. Any other comments? Cool. All right, you got enough to go on? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. All right, so let's move on to item 7A, which is the bid award for modeling of Parks and Recreation Office. During the budget process, council approved to remodel the Parks and Recreation Office located next to City Hall to match the other city facilities recently constructed. Staff has bid the workout, and the Phoenix Group located in Fort Mill was the lowest qualified and responsible bidder. Are there any questions? Did, did we, not to change the subject in the middle of a, but what did we ever decide to do on the bathrooms here at Glenner Center? Were we also bidding on that? There was, the bathrooms, did those ever, those keep coming John up? John took care of it. John did took not? care of that. You did the lobby and bathroom. Yeah. Oh, the bathrooms are yeah. taken care of. Okay, never mind. Charlie, Sorry. Do you, do you feel that um, the paving will come in if you add that to the 45,000, that you'll be around the 113 that we've yes, got sir. I, th okay. I think we actually can uh, come in a little bit less. Great. Based on what we're, what we're hearing and seeing right now. Yes, sir. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? All right, I'll consider a motion. Perfect. Motion to award the bid for remodeling of Parks and Recreation Department office to the Phoenix Group in an amount not to exceed $45,000 and authorize the city manager to issue the notice to proceed. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any final comments before we vote? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, it's unanimous. Let's go to 7B, which is the introduction and first reading of an ordinance to adopt a revised business license ordinance in accordance with the Business License Standardization Act 2020, Act number 176. The General Assembly of South Carolina adopted the Business License Standardization Act of 2020, which mandated that all local governments must come into compliance with by January 1st, 2020. 2022. The ordinance before council tonight is the model ordinance provided by the Municipal Association and its adoption is required is a requirement by the state. Are there any questions or comments? Mr. Mayor and members of council, I'd like to make a motion to approve the introduction and first reading of an ordinance to repeal and replace the city's current business license code sections with the updated model provided by the Municipal Association in accordance with the Business License Standardization Act. I have a motion, do I have a second? Second. Second by Heather Overman. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Another unanimous one. Let's go with, uh, oh, we're already done. Item 8B, the city manager's report. Charlie Funderburg. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Members of Council, I've uh, already talked about the, uh, the deer study, so we'll keep moving there. 
Uh, we concluded our uh, fiscal year in great shape. We were able to add to our cash reserves, bringing that total to $4 million. It's the highest it's ever been and keeps us in line with our reserve uh, balance ordinance. Um, huge kudos to our department heads uh, and their teams uh, for, for being responsible through, the, through that fiscal year and, and putting us in the position that we were in. Um, I think this may be the most excited Bob Barkin has been about our uh, auditors coming in um, that I've ever seen him, but they'll be here um, first week of December uh, to put the audit together. So um, great job there. Um, we have multiple items out for bid, um, and uh, we've already advertised those both on Skibo social media, and they're currently on our uh, website, and we have sent uh, ad to the paper, which ran, I think, uh, it was either this past weekend or weekend before last. Um, uh, generating everybody to hear, but pool management contract, um, the concession stand contract, uh, paving for the Parks and Rec office and connecting that to City Hall. Um, a we're going on a, a design build route with the connector trail. Um, and then uh, renovations at the Beach and Swim Center, which will include expanding the concession area and renovating the restrooms and a utility trailer for the uh, T-Cud bypass pump and our sports uniforms for Parks and Recreation. So lots and lots of things out for bid here at the beginning of the fiscal year. Um, and we look forward to bringing those, those back in um, over the next few meetings uh, for council approval um, as, as they come due. So a um, lot going on business, uh, business opportunities there with the city. Uh, fall festival's coming up on October 30th. It runs from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. right out here in the parking lot. Uh, parking up at this facility will be for golfers only that day. So um, if you're planning on attending um, the festival, walk, golf cart up, or uh, go to Rundy or TK Elementary School. We've got a shuttle bus running um, that'll get you up here. Um, Katie B's done a great job um, getting a lot of arts and crafts vendors this year. So looking forward to seeing those out um, and uh, hopefully good weather for, for that event. Um, let's see, Candidate Forum will be held on Thursday night this week. Uh, put on by the York County Regional Chamber of Commerce. Candidates will be here with no audience due to crowding concerns and COVID at the Chamber's request. Um, I do want to specify, this is not a city event. We just use our facility. It's Chamber of Commerce's event, always has been. Um, they take the questions, they decide the format, they get the moderators and the question talkers. We will have it on Channel 115. We will have it on uh, live streamed on Facebook Live. And uh, it will be recorded, and the following day will be put up on the city's website for on-demand viewing. So uh, lots of different ways to watch it, uh, both uh, live or in the days after. So you're saying some candidates don't get the questions before others? If they That's do, crazy. you got to take that That's up with the chamber. <laughs> I, don't know what the, I don't know what the questions are. So... Um, so that's, that's going on. We're excited about that. Uh, it starts at 630 um, with the council candidates. And then once they wrap up, it will be the mayor candidates is what I am told by the chamber that the format will be. Uh, so same as what it's been in the past. Um, and then last, but certainly not least, I want to thank Chief Parker for his service, not only just to our community, but to the law enforcement community here in York County over the past 28 years. This is his last council meeting with us. Uh, Friday, we will have our chance to wish him well at his retirement reception. But Chief, on behalf of staff and the citizens of our community, I can't thank you enough. You've definitely made your mark here and we're all better for it. So. And Mayor, that concludes my report for this evening. Are there any questions for the city manager? I have a quick one. Charlie, can you just give an update on the Heron Harbor crosswalks? I know you and I talked about it, but it continues to come up. Last time we heard uh, from DOT, which was uh, less than a month ago, they were anticipating first week of October based on the timeline they gave us. That has come and gone. Uh, we are trying to track down our contacts, get responses from them for an update. As soon as we have it, which I'm hoping will be in the next day or so, uh, I will most certainly get an email out to council to keep you apprised. Uh, but it's <laughs> Vic didn't show up at the last RFETS meeting, and there's not one this month. There you go. And I'm sure he's going to call in sick in November. <laughs> any, any word from Army Corps on the uh, No, sure. They are not responding as of now, but uh, Shane is contacting them every single Wednesday 
um, trying to get a response and hopefully get a yay or nay at least on whether they will come up and spend a little bit of time with us. Refresh my memory. When did we really, really, really start talking about that crosswalk that we were really, it was, we got it approved. December we to, 2018. There you go. Eight. I was going to guess about two years, so three so years. Three years. Three years. Three years. And people wonder how government accomplishes anything. I wonder myself. Um, well, maybe before I leave in 75 days, it will at least get started. I can actually see something happening. At least you're not counting them, counting them down. Right. I'm not counting them down. Somebody, I think somebody told me, Walt, did you tell me how many days I had? Walt's counting them down. Um, is there an artist rendition yet online about the trail that we can, people can see where the trail is going to be and what it's going to look like? The connector anything? trail? Yeah. Um, I have an image. It's not anywhere close not to be good. exact except for where it's going to begin and where it's going to end. The path is that in available between. online somewhere? Um, it's not, but we can have that up tomorrow. Okay. Oh, it is online. It is on the RFP page uh, under doing business. Um, there, they click on that link. It's a very short RFP, but uh, there is an image on there. Okay. Any other questions, Charlie? All right, let's go to council comments. We'll start with Ryan. Um, as usual, thanks, police, fire, first responders. Really appreciate what you guys do. Um, Chief, just a quick story. It's, it's, it's his last meeting. When Dave and I first came in, what year was that, 2016? 16, yep. It was, he came on shortly after, right around that time. And uh, about a year into it, happened to be having a conversation. He's like, how many drunks do you know? I'm like, that's a strange question, Chief. <laughs> and apparently the, the, the point of the story, the funny part was that everybody that was getting pulled over, whether speeding or DUI, their first answer was either, I know Ryan or I know Dave. <laughs> it's, it was a joke within a department on how many times they would say Ryan or Dave's name when they're about to you know, get a ticket or, or whatever that may be. But thanks for everything you've done, Chief. You've really taken the department to a different level. And, you know, they, we, we can't express our gratitude enough for all you've contributed to make this department something very special. So, so thank you. And just to caveat on that, our first meeting um, with, the, with this council, we discussed that we don't know what other councils did in the past, but we were not going to get involved with people who got yep. tickets or anything like that. That wasn't our duty <laughs> to do that. That's why we have a judge. And I don't know what other councils did. I'm just imagining, but we weren't going to do that. So. Right, and it's never happened, right? So we, right. So this council doesn't play that. Thanks, Chief. Uh, I'll, I'll wait till my mayor's time, and then I'll take my thirty minutes. Alicia, um, I, I just want to. Well, I'll certainly echo what what Ryan said, Chief. Thanks so much, and you know, good luck with all your future endeavors. We really will miss you, and um, you've done a great job for the city. So thank you for that. Um, I, I'll also just say, great job to to Mandy. I don't want to say her last name wrong, so I'll just say her first name, Miss Mandy. Um, helping Mr. Smith and, and Haley Williamson and Sarge, Sergeant Echina. Um Life Save, I love that. TK residents saving people's lives. I mean, City Heroes. City Heroes. That's so awesome. So maybe we used we to be do, City of Trees. Now we're City Heroes. Yeah. We gotta do trees something ain't with that. doing nothing. Let's do Heroes. Do, yeah. Got to do something with that. So that's, that's super cool and um, great job to everyone for that. I love hearing that. Um, thanks to all those who came out to the Catawba Park fundraiser at Model A Brewing um, last week. It was a lot of fun. Um, I don't know how much we raised yet, so uh, hopefully it will um, be a lot, but uh, I'm sure we'll get that update. Are you doing know? It's going to be around between $900 and $1,000. Wow, mm. that's fantastic. And you were matching funds? Yeah, you're matching funds? That's you great. Were, you were. That's awesome, Dave. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Mayor. <laughs> um, and, and, of course, thanks to Model A and um, for all you do to support us and allowing us to come there. Um, uh, last I'll say is just uh, good luck to all the candidates. I think next time we meet, we will know, we will know. We the will. results of the election. So everyone get out and vote November 2nd. Um, and thank you to everyone who, who put themselves out there to, to run and serve for our city. So good luck, everyone, and thank you. Heather? Yeah, you know, when you go third or fourth or fifth, uh, it's, it's pretty much on repeat. But uh, Chief... We're going to miss you. We've, um, you know, we all have really great relationships with you. Um, we wish you all the best in your next Speak chapter. Speak for yourself. I never really. What? <laughs> well, maybe you. Um, 
but yeah, no, seriously, we're going to miss you, and uh, we'll, we'll ring it in this Friday, but um, thank you for everything, seriously. Um, and that's it. I'll, I guess I'll, I'll be here Thursday, and good luck to everybody. Good luck to all you. Go ahead, Gus. All right. <clears throat> well, first, um, congrats to the, uh, the two heroes at the beginning of the meeting. I, it's just, that's incredible, and that's what TGK is all about. Um, speaking of heroes, Chief, uh, going to miss you. You leave huge shoes to fill. Um, can't say enough about you. You know I'm a big fan. So thank you for all you've done for the city. Um, Model A, I'm still picking glue out of my mustache. If anybody saw the, the get-up I wore to bartend, I'm still getting glue out of my mustache. I might have to just shave it off. Um, but that was a lot of fun, and it all went to a good cause. Um, to the candidates, uh, as everybody said, by, by next time we'll be there. So um, you're down into the short rows now. Um, good luck to everybody. I appreciate you putting yourselves out there to um, for the abuse. Um, that all being said, lastly, in case everybody doesn't know, Halloween is on the 31st. The city doesn't decide when Halloween is. Next year, Halloween will be on the 31st. And probably the year after that as well. And the city doesn't decide. So this year, Halloween is on the 31st. Thank you and good night. Would you like to make a motion for that? No, it's on the 31st. It's a Sunday this year, correct? Is that why we're bringing that up? Because yeah. people don't want to do Sundays? I don't have kids anymore, so I don't keep up with that stuff anymore. I just, oh, well, you guys. <laughs> You like that? Yeah. Still got it. Still sharp as a tack, I tell you. Um, yeah, Chief, um, I can't wait till Friday. It's a roast, right? Is that what it is? It's a roast? Good. Okay. Or, of a, or it was a costume party. I can't remember which one, uh, but I thought it was a roast. But I'll be there. I'll be there with my best material I can find. Um, and, uh, yeah, the, I'm very proud of our heroes. It's a great, great thing we do in our city. So we just did that a while back with the house burning, um, the fella. Um, gosh, we do that quite often, and we got a bunch of Eagle Scouts we recognize. We got a really nice city, really great city. I'm gonna, I'm gonna miss being up here in 75 days. But who's counting? 74 and a half. 74 and a couple of hours. I'll be retirement bound. Okay. With that, unless you guys want to stick around, we can do an adjournment, or we can sit here and talk to ch about Chief more. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. We're adjourned. Aye. It was unanimous.